with you. Hallelujah. A great month is ahead of you. Hallelujah. Please be seated in God's presence. Let's look at God's word briefly before we go into our prayers this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Thank you, Father. I'm reading from the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, the message version. I read from verse 11. So, let's keep at it and eventually arrive at the place of rest. Not drop out to some sort of disobedience. Not drop out. When I was in school years back in the University of Nigeria and Suka, you see some people, they call them six over four. Some they call them seven over six. Some five over four. What it means is that he's supposed to have graduated four year course, but he has extra years. So that's five over four. Then those who are doing vet med, maybe they had extra year, they are seven over six. At least somehow they are holding on. They are still in the university trying to make up for their mistakes. But here scripture says, so let us keep at it eventually. Let us keep at it and eventually arrive at the place of rest. This is where I'm going to not drop out. We won't drop out. We won't wake up one morning and say, I'm done. I'm tired. This Christianity thing, this faith and prayer thing doesn't work. No, we will not be drop out. Those who drop out, they don't get their certificate. They don't get their BSc. But those who stay, even if they call them seven over four or whatever, at the end of the day, they have something to show for it. We will not be drop out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I continue my reading, verse 12. God means what he says. What he says goes. <clears throat> His powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's couplet, cutting through everything. Whether doubt, the word of God will cut through it. Whether defense, the word of God will cut through it. Laying us open to listen and to obey. Hallelujah. I want to say something a little about that verse 12. He says, God means what he says. We all know this, but sometimes when situation and life challenges come, it's as if we're doubting whether God means what he says. Hallelujah. What he says goes. His powerful word is sharp. It can cut to everything. It can cut to the doubt in your heart as you're listening to me now. It can call to the defense situation has presented before your faith. Situation standing like opposition before you. The word of God can call to it. Verse 13 says, Nothing and no one is impervious to God's word. We can get away from it no matter what. No one can. We can't get away from it. Nothing. No challenge. No opposition, no battle, nothing. And no one is impervious to God's word. I go to verse 14. Now that we know, now that we know what we have, excuse me, now that we know what we have, what do we have? Jesus. Now that we know what we have, Jesus, this great high priest with ready access to God, let us let it Let's not let it slip through our fingers. Now that I know what I've got, now that I know I have a high priest who is touched by the feelings of my infirmities, verse 15 says, we don't have a priest who is out of touch. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our realities. Which means God understands when I'm traumatized by an experience. Which means Jesus understands when I'm not physically sick but I'm mentally ill. Which means Jesus understands when I'm depressed. Which means Jesus understands when I cannot pray, I'm overwhelmed. We don't have a priest who is out of touch. He's in touch, he understands. The Bible says he's been through weaknesses and testing. He's been through whatever you're going through, he understands it. He has experienced it all but he did not sin. Our last verse says, so 
let's walk right up to him this morning. We came to pray now that we know what we've got. Let's walk right up to him. Some people under the sound of my voice are sick in their body. Physical sickness. Doctor has given them a report. Their faith is crumbling. One of my daughters got a report. You know, I now told her, I believe this is what the devil is telling you in your mind. Before I could say one or two, she said, mommy, exactly. You know, some people can live with HIV, for instance. They will not be sick. They will not die. But the day they are told they are HIV positive, everything will give way. Fear is the devil's policeman. Somebody is having one feeling. It's not able to stand. And I say it's not a nerve breakdown, nerve, uh, nervous breakdown. They call it one name, neuro, whatever. Immediately she hears that. Devil begins to tell her, soon you will be crippled. Soon you will be in wheelchair. You know, this thing comes very fast. This is real life experience. Nobody is hearing what you're hearing. It's in your mind. You will soon die. So you have to arrange your children. I've had people here in this ministry that devil had told to die. Told them the day they will die. They will come here looking like they will die. I will tell them when that voice comes. Tell the voice, I will not die. I will live. I have a destiny to fulfill. It's not a program of keeping quiet and speaking to yourself in your mind. No. The devil is too rascally for you to be quiet. Depression will catch up with you. You will be rejected. You will tell him it's a lie. That's a lie. Based on God's word, I will not even fear. You want me to be crippled by fear? Fear cripples a man. It doesn't only cripple your faith. It cripples your emotion. It cripples you spiritually. Some people under the sound of my voice, you are awake. Midnight time, you are awake for prayer. But you are not praying. Some people are awake. Some are awake at midnight between the 12th. Um, hours of 12 midnight to 3 a.m. I have so many people awake. They can do every other thing but pray. Hallelujah. Because one or two times they've prayed, the enemy attacked them. So because of that, I'd rather keep awake. I can even sing song but not to pray. Now that we know, back to our message, now that we know the kind of high priest that we have, he understands my feeling. He knows I'm traumatized by an experience. He knows I'm afraid. He knows my faith is going down. Now that I know, now that I know that he cares, let us walk right up to him and get what he's so ready to give. He's ready to help. He's ready to give you strength. He's ready to put you back in the mood again. Hallelujah. We talked in the second session, in the second session about being in the mood. Sometimes you can walk into a prayer program like this. You're not in the mood to pray. You're not in the mood. The zeal is gone. The appetite, the enthusiasm is gone. The Lord will put you back in the mood. In the name of Jesus. Now that we know that our high priest understands our feeling, his experience, let us walk right up to him and get what he's so ready to give. Take the mercy, accept the help. Take the mercy, accept the help. In this meeting, this morning, Jesus is ready, standing, waiting for you to give you that mercy you are asking for, to give you help. We are all looking for help in different dimensions, different departments, different ways. What I'm looking for may not be yours. As our faces are different, our tastes, our inclinations differ, so our needs and challenges differ. But whatever, here, Jesus is positioned to give us, is ready to give us mercy and help. Destiny Prayer Network, connecting men to God through prayers in Jesus' name.